west of the Brecon Bridge International Park is home to some of Britain's most stunning landscapes. Distinctive flat-topped mountains with steep cliffs and mysterious lakes. Cave systems where rivers disappear underground in their tunnels and passages. Deep river gorges that conceal fabulous waterfalls. All of these spectacular features have been shaped by rock The makeup of the rocks and the natural forces that have acted on them that have together created the landscape we see today. So, let's discover how. My name is Ivor Coleman, and I'll be your guide as we put ourselves on the scene and take a journey across the geopark. The geopark is made up of five major types of rock. The oldest were formed nearly 500 million years ago in the geological periods of the Ordovician and the Silurian. Then there's an area of old red sandstone, carboniferous limestone, millstone grit, and the youngest rocks, the coal fishes. If we could slice through the geopark from north to south, this is what we find under the surface. A sequence of rock layers tilted to the south, the youngest in grey, the oldest in green and pink. Let's take a look at the oldest rocks first. Here, just below Manard Mudbai, we're standing on the remnants of the ancient Caledonian mountain range formed from rocks 450 million years old. This was home to some of our oldest ancestors. In fact, the geology here is named after Welsh tribes, the Silures and the Ordovices. So there could be no more appropriate place to start our journey across the geopark. Our next rock is the Old Red Sandstone. It forms the highest ground, dropping away in cliffs to the north and shelving much more gently to the south. This type of landscape is called an escarpment. One of the best places to see it is the mountainous area behind Shinabandar. This beautiful lake sits in a perfect basin, or coon, gouged out by a glacier during the ice ages. Here at Shinabandar, it's easy to see how this landscape is shaped by rock. The old red sandstone has formed these cliffs behind me, and the flat tops of the mountains above. This is also a place of legend. They say a mysterious lady of the lake lives here. Well, no sign of her so far. Hi there. It's easy to see now that we're on the old red sandstone. The earth beneath our feet is given this red ground colour by the rocks below. These were formed over 350 million years ago in desert-like conditions. We can see the sandstone layers dipping away to the south on the mountainside. Now we're up in the wind on the mountaintop, and behind me you can see some lighter coloured bands of rock capping the cliffs. These harder layers give the summits their flat tops plateau shape, and that's why they're called plateau lakes. Up here, the land slopes gently away from the cliff tops as the old red sandstone dips to the south, eventually disappearing under our next band of rock. And that's the Carboniferous Limestone. It's the layer above the old red sandstone in our rock sequence. Now, limestone shapes the landscape in very distinctive ways. On the surface, it forms limestone pavements. Water seeping down joints in the rock separates the blocks of limestone, giving them a pavement-like appearance, like these in Australia. Just south of here, the limestone has more spectacular features in store. At Kumpur, the river, the Avon Nectar, does something really surprising. As it flows onto the limestone, it disappears into a cave. Limestone is a pervious rock. It lets the water through. This leads to the formation of tunnels and caverns. Down here at Paul Thorogol, the gateway to the cave system, it's very much an underground world that's been shaped by the limestone rock, by rainwater running down, by the river flowing through. 
For the next 250 meters, the Avon Nesta winds its way through passages and caves before reappearing on the surface when the rock size changes. Now, this is a place for experienced and well-equipped cavers only, and I'm not one of them, so we'll go back up on top and see where the stream comes out into the open. away under our next rock, the millstone grit, the river comes back out into the open air and flows on down towards Pontnet Beckham and some more stunning scenery. Let's take a closer look at the millstone grit. It's the band lying on top of the limestone. Impressive woody gorges are typical of this millstone grit landscape. They were formed towards the end of the last ice age when torrents of water cut down fast into the ground beneath the ice. It's not just steep-sided valleys that make this place so special. What it's really famous for is its waterfalls. And here we are at Scood Klingwin on the Avon Nesta. It's the same river that started life up on the old red sandstone escarpment and then flowed down through the limestone caves. Here we see it cascading over some very obvious layers of rock. As the torrent has worn down through those layers, it's created steps in the stream bed, and as a result, a series of amazing waterfalls. This is a really great place to explore, but do be careful if you come here, because the ground is very steep and slippery, and I, for one, don't want to end up swimming in this, this freezing water with more waterfalls up ahead. Our last and youngest rocks are the coal measures. They're present only at the southern edge of the geopark, but of course they spread far beyond the geopark across South Wales. No rock could be more closely linked to this area's industrial heritage. It's a reminder that these rocks have shaped not only the landscape, but also the lives of the people of this area. Here, alongside the Ned Beckham, just a little way up the path from the Waterfall Centre, we're standing next to what's called the Farewell Rock. 